Hello viewers, we want to thank you for making the time to watch this Glory Ifezwe Foundation project on education series A, where it has to do with investing in early readers and the benefits of doing so. Um, we have here with us Dr. Emmanuel Chukuma. Now, um, before we continue, we want to thank our partners and sponsors who are helping to make this um, a success. So we want to thank Alliance for Progressive and Sustainable Environment. We want to thank Timothy Chukuma Educational Foundation. We want to thank El Passion Foundation. We want to thank Girls Education Mission International. We want to thank Youth Against Drugs Initiative. We want to thank the Henry Osabute Foundation and the Rank Digital Marketing Consultancy Limited. Thank you so much, Dr. Imano Chukuma, for making the time to have this session with us. We really, really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, please, thank you. Pleasure to meet you, Dr. Thank you, our viewers. Um, kindly follow the Glory Fesway Foundation on the various social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn at Glory Fesway Foundation. And now to set the ball rolling before we, we start asking questions from this learned individual, I would like to have to introduce him to you, our viewers. Now, um, Engineer Dr. Chukuma Emmanuel is an environmental engineer and a lecturer at Inamdi Azikiwe University Oka at, um, of Anambra State. He is a member of many professional bodies, such as American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers, the ASABE, or ASABE, the Nigeria Institute of Agricultural Engineers, the NIAE, Nigeria Society of Engineers, NSE and a registered professional engineer with Council for the Regulations of Engineering in Nigeria, Koren. He has more than 60 publications and peer-reviewed journals and more than 10 conference papers presented in national and international conferences. He is a prestigious fellow of Commonwealth Blue Charter and the ambassador as representative of Association of Commonwealth Universities, ACU, for Nnamdi Azikiwe University, Oka. He has won several research grants from national and international bodies. He is a grant recipient on Institutional Strengthening Program, ISP, an implementation fund for Inamdi Azikiwe University Oka on a formal membership program. He is also a postdoctoral fellow of University Putra Malaysia, UPM Malaysia. He serves as an editorial board member for a number of journals and also a reviewer for top ranked Elsevier journals. Now, Dr. Chukuma is currently a research fellow with Future Africa, University of Pretoria, South Africa. He is a young, vibrant environmental activist. He's also the founder and coordinator of Alliance for Progressive and Sustainable Environment, APSC, an NGO on environmental sustainability, and the founder and coordinator of Mr. Timothy Mwako Chukuma Memorial Education Foundation, the TNCMEF, an NGO with mandates to enhance education, especially in rural areas. He's passionate about making impact and is a regular guest in several radio and TV stations on environmental sustainability. Thank you so much for making the time once again, Dr. Chikuma. I'm actually thrilled with your, your profile alone, and we hope to get there. <laughs> thank you so much. We also want to say a very big thank you to the Glory Fesway Foundation for making this um, a success and a possibility. So, Doc, um, to set the ball rolling, right, and investing in early readers and the benefits of doing so, what are the basic essentials of early literacy skills? Thank you so much. Yeah, um, there are a number of skills that we expect the young children to have. And then with these skills, learning becomes easy. So for instance, um, um, there are early skills of phonics, which 
children should be able to pronounce words properly. There are also written skills on word recognition. There are writing skills. Um, people should be able to write because writing is the word communicating what is in your mind. And then people should be able to know what is in your mind by what you have written. So writing skill is a very good, um, really an essential skill. Then speaking. People sometimes see people saying something different from what they have in mind. So um, such situations create kind of chaos. So um, these are some of the skills that um, people should have at early stage. And then, of course, when you're able to speak, and then I am able to respond, there will be communication. And when there is communication, there's something like discussion. And whenever there's discussion, you can grow in knowledge. So um, all these are basic skills that are required for one to make progress and then be able to interact with other people, be able to learn from other people, be able to even reflect and assess his or herself. So these are the early skills I just want to mention. Right? Okay, okay. And when you were explaining, you, were, you kept mentioning early, early, early. What do we mean by early or an early reader? Is it limited or is it subject to age, level of education or maturity? Okay, the word early has to do with on time. Okay, so um, so naturally when humans are born, um, if their time has started reading or counting or ticking. So um, being able to acquire those skills at that young age um, from one year, two years, three years is what we mean by early. So um, at that basic point, um, the brain is at the maximum capacity to receive. So that's why um, the child who grows in a multilingual environment will be able to speak up to five languages. So um, it's critical that at that early stage where the brain is at the highest receptive capacity that um, the brain is actually maximized by you kind know, of um, placing the individual in a conducive environment where he can get those things at. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And um, from that explanation, can we say that early readers are more successful? Because sometimes you see that um, people or the 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 kind of um, people or illiterate or excuse me to say illiterate to who succeed tell you that um, they didn't get the opportunity to go to school, they can't read, but um, from explanations in their local dialects, they've been able to make it. So we want to know if early readers are more successful and success doesn't necessarily have to be with um, um, like triumph or being superior over the other, but your ability to relate with people, your ability to actually maneuver your way through life. Um. You know, sometimes we we'll, we'll have a problem with society because um, success is defined differently. So if you have the money and you think you're successful, then um, it could be success financially. But um, success by all standards is ability to be able to um, navigate all aspects of the society. So for me, um, it is critical that all these aspects of human life are kind of um, there is success in them. So um, a successful person should be able to communicate to people, um, be able to relate to society, be able to have understanding of human psychology, be able to understand all the fundamentals of humans. So um, when you said you are let, you are successful, for instance, you have the money and then you cannot stand publicly to speak to people, because you lack the words, because you lack the skills, then um, your success is limited. So, like I said, early stage when you are when you have these early skills, you be able, you kind of let me say you are the um, faster type, and you will be able to learn a lot from other people because um, no man is an island. And then um, early stage um, knowledge makes you have the capacity to interact with other people, learn from them. Uh, for instance, you'll be able to add uh, five, six, seven years, ten years old. You see a child reading a novel by a fifty years old man, and then 
sometimes if you're asking you question, asking parents questions that are beyond their age, is because of that early exposure. So you are able to read the books of people who are 50 years older than you, 100 years older than you, 30 years older than you, and you'll be able to learn their life experience. So like I said, early stage exposure or reading enhances growth in every other, in every aspect of human life. Thank you very much. Um, viewers, there you have it. Um, early stage reading enhances every aspect of um, human life. Um, thank you so much for staying with us. We've had a couple of submissions by Dr. Imano. Now, Dr. Imano, still on this topic, um, how does reading contribute to the empowerment of the GDP of a country's economy? How does that contribute to the empowerment of the GDP of a, con a country's economy? Yes. Um, you know, um, in a country, you know the strength of a country um, by the choice people make in a country. So, and that's why we say that basic education is a fundamental, is a fundamental human rights. So take for an instance in a country where 95% of the people have basic education. That means they can make critical decisions on who rules the country. If this is different from a country where you have less than 30% that are learned and have basic education. Then um, of course, when it comes to voting or election, um, even if you're a professor, your vote is won. And then 30, 50,000 stupid persons, their vote is the same as the amount, as the number. So um, when we have more learned people, they will be able to institute leaders or install leaders that are capable of enhancing the society in every aspect and then create good economic condition for the people. And because people are learned, they will be able to buy into that and then be able to make progress. So the GDP will generally be increased. So generally, everybody will be making progress because um, the, the platform has been created from the political angle, which is also based on the decision of the people because of the ability to understand their civic rights. So like I said, um, when people, when we have a critical mass of people who are learned in a society, the GDP will be what much more enhanced because they will be able to take good um, and financial decisions and then they will be able to it politically wisely and then um, everything of course say whatever goes up comes around uh, that brings the kind of stability in that society thank you so much thank you so much from having early literacy skills from what we mean by an early reader from how early readers are successful to the empowerment of the GDP of a country. You have um, provided very salient points that we believe that when we um, apply them or consider them, um, they are going to help us in our everyday lives. Um, doctor, we are continuing that. We want to know um, for Involving parents in the, the, the education of their children, we want to know how we can encourage parents, especially parents in rural areas, to be involved in their children's education. How can we encourage parents in rural areas to be involved in their children's education? Okay, thank you so much. Um, um... Anything that you invest your money requires your attention. So um, in the business world, it's believed that if you spend some money in a business, then you should be able to also invest your time to ensure that the business runs smoothly. So um, if a parent has chosen to invest in the child's education, then it is worthwhile to also invest time in seeing to the success of the child's education so um in rural areas um you usually have this problem of um that the parents usually doesn't really have um all the knowledge so one of the ways to do that is having a kind of um 
a parent's teacher's um, forum, a platform where parents and teachers could be able to meet and then discuss. Okay, so um, yes, in rural areas, this is very, very important because um, the number of challenges that the students are having that the parents are not aware would impede the progress of the children. But when a platform like this is there, um, it helps the parents to know the challenges the children are having. So also in rural areas, um, it's also good to integrate um, the church into what is happening in the school. Because um, some of the rural areas, um, they have this religious belief and then they have respect for their priests. So, and the priests or the churches too have um, this kind of um, objective of seeing to the growth of children. They have this high belief on their priests. They appetize this to the religious. And sometimes when a teacher complains about a child, the parents usually don't take it so serious. But when they notice that the churches or the priests are involved, which they should ideally be involved because they are also involved in building capacity of people. And like we keep saying, it is always better to do it at the early stage than when people have been formed. So um, when the church is integrated with schools, it becomes easier. In fact, um, this is the major reasons why some of the colonial schools integrated both church, where churches also have schools and they keep monitoring the schools like what we have in Nigeria. So um, there shouldn't be a kind of um, leaving the work only for educational sector. The churches should be involved because they are also part of the whole. So um, it will be interesting when a number of things about the students are raised by the church or the priests. Okay, it will make some of the parents to be more serious with what they are doing about their kids. Then um, there should also be kind of a way of creating incentive for children who are making outstanding work in schools. Okay? And then um, not just identifying with the children, they also have to tie such prize or get with the parents because it takes a good parents to have a good child. So um, it will be a motivation for other parents to keep and ask, what are you doing about your child that makes your child to succeed? And the parents will say, wow, I give my child two hours every day when I come back from work. So, this would serve as a work of motivating others. So um, the idea of just um, um, showcasing the child is good, but when we showcase the child with the parents, it will help to encourage other people to ask, please, what is their secrets? I think um, this should be enough, or if you want, I can see the other points too. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, yes, you can. Um, but before you continue with that, um, uh, we want to also continue appreciating our viewers. Leave your comments about these topics, about investing in early readers and the benefits of doing so. What's some of the basic essentials of early literacy does for us? What we mean by early readers? What you think about that? Leave them in the comments sections. Let's have your take on them. Like, follow the pages, and let's let's see. Let's have your take on all these things because it's not just one person's view the matters. I mean. Uh, um, if we all have experiences, if we all have knowledge and intake about this this issue, then I think we should all bring them on board so that we can all contribute to the betterment of our society. So, Doc, let's continue with um, about three or four points that you have about um, encouraging parents and in, to, to be involved in the education of their kids. You've spoken about incentives, you've spoken about the uh, parents' forums, Parent forums, the conference on parent forums with teachers, and you've spoken about uh, in, uh, religious bodies being involved. What are some of the those other submissions? Okay, yes. Um, in addition to that, um, one of the ways we can also get this done is by having a forum of parents, like I said earlier. Okay, where where um, some of the challenges should be tackled together. So for instance, um, the children are having problem of um, not having a good teacher or the teacher is not too good. So when there's a form of parents, um, it helps to solve some of the problems. Then um, another thing also is um, 
NGOs like we have can also get involved because a number of times some parents are not satisfied with the feedback they're getting from the teachers. Okay, but when they see external bodies get involved, okay, it's one of the ways to encourage um, parents. Okay, um, I remember some of the items, some of the programs we've done in the past, like going to rural areas and giving um, some of the children that have bad uniforms, the uniforms are torn, they don't come to school with good footwears, and NGOs goes around to provide footwears, provide good uniform or new ones, and then help to pay school fees for parents that cannot provide. So these are some of the ways we can also help and encourage um, people in rural areas to be involved in the children's education, because some of them are truly trying their best based on their financial capacity when NGOs comes in and then um, help them to carry that financial body, it serves as a kind of um, strong encouragement and incentive for parents. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doc, for your time. We really appreciate you taking the time off your busy schedules and coming to share this um, with, with us. Um, viewers, thank you so much. Um, like comment our pages on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Glory Ifezwe Foundation. You can follow me and Janet Ousudako on LinkedIn. Also, we want to continue to thank our partners and sponsors because without them, this wouldn't have been possible. First of all, we want to thank the Alliance for Progressive and Sustainable Environment. We want to thank the Timothy Chikum Educational Foundation, El Passion Foundation, Girls Education Mission International, Youth Against Drugs Initiative, the Henry Osabuti Foundation, and Rank the Guitar Marketing Consultancy Limited. Thank you so much for helping to partner and sponsor this program. Thank you so much, Doc. We also want to thank Glory the Fesway Foundation, the host organization for this great project. We thank you so much for your time. We want to continue having your time joining us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn at Glory Fesway Foundation. And I, your host, my name is Jeanette Usudako. You can follow me on LinkedIn at Jeanette Usudako. Thank you so much for your time. We shall meet again next time. Thank you so much. Stay blessed. Bye.